Hey guys, and welcome back to the Pennies to Pounds podcast with your host Kia. And this is a podcast where we aim to dispel your myths, simplify difficult financial jargon, and rectify your own personal problems. Welcome back to another amazing episode focused all around Gen Z. And you know what? How can I have a conversation about Gen Z with the OGs, the Gen Z club? So, guys, who are you? Let's go around. Big up. So, my name is Denzel, co founder of the Gen Z club, and also a property entrepreneur. Um, yeah, I started Gen Z club with these two. Back in January, around 2021, started on the base of Clubhouse Rooms, and now we've expanded to like a big organisation where we host monthly networking events and also do consulting for firms to target Gen Zs. Smooth, smooth. What's good, guys? <laughs> Talkie Banks, baby. Um, Famous. I'm also co-founder of the Gen Z Club. Also teach the UK about personal finance on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, and I trade currencies. Cool. I haven't got a slogan, but my name is Austin O'Kolo. Um I'm a world winning business owner. I own a GQ Pitch restaurant called One Start London. I got my own book club and I also co found the Gen Z club alongside these two handsome men. We actually started in August, <laughs> not in January, but you know, I'm always correcting them. Always okay. correcting, yeah. wow, wow. I'm but that's joking. incredible. All three of you do amazing things, Thank right? You. So before we get into anything else about you guys, tell us why you felt the need to start Gen Z clubs. So obviously, mm. I was there when you guys did Clubhouse Rooms because this mm. was when we were locked up, locked down. Locked down um, right. And we were turned into Clubhouse and you guys were very much so instrumental in creating amazing rooms. But why did you feel like it was necessary to create it? I can say it from my angle mm. quickly. So with me, I'm pokey, I was a bit envious of poker in it. So I'm big on personal branding in it and you know, like building it, finding value online. And Poku hit TikTok at a perfect time where, as I'll tell you, where he hit that sweet spot where like time's important with social media. And Poku hit that. So he capitalized off the fact that, you know, there was low, large volume of people watching it, but low people making content for it. So he capitalized off that and, you know, go on TikTok. But as with me, um, I thought Clubhouse is the next thing. So I missed TikTok, but Clubhouse is my one in it. So I thought, let me jump on Clubhouse to give value. And I thought, who can I host Clubhouse rooms with and be consistent? And, and um, they, um, Denzel was the person that I kind of went to saying, I saw he was always in his own rooms. I thought, you know what? Let me go jump on his thing and see if I can, you know, make something work in it. So we literally just did clubhouse rooms every week for about six months consistently. Wow. Just do every that. So single, no, so no days like, off. That's literally. the thing. Like, wow. I, my motto in life here is do it consistently or don't do it all. Like, I'll either do it with consistency or don't do it all. If it's a podcast, a YouTube channel, I need to be consistent or I just mm-hmm. won't do it. And um, I thought Denzel also had that kind of ethos as well in it. So I said, cool, Denzel, let's just give value and let's grow our personal brands in it. And then that eventually led us to build a community on of Clubhouse with Gen Z Club. We thought we'll do our first event, see how, went, see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Sold out in two hours. Then we thought let's do another one. Mm-hmm. Sold out again in Nottingham. Did another one in London. Sold out again. And we just kept the screw from there. Mm. And just to add on that, I think we, our main goal was to make like a platform for Gen Zs to actually come, whether it's your entrepreneurial career or your corporate career. Because I think a lot of people think to be in business, you have to be from a certain background or this or that. So even Poku, so I've known Poku from quite young because we are from like a similar area. So even before the Gen Z club back in 2019, we used to host like networking events in that like, Starbucks. So yeah. that was like a- Wow. Yeah, just to bring together like-minded people. And so when, as Austin mentioned, after the clubhouse rooms, then, so that was just me and Austin in the clubhouse rooms. I think Poker came on every now and again, but it was just yeah. mainly me and Austin. I think you guys came in the same room, didn't you? Finance room. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That, yeah that was yeah, a big yeah. room. Yeah. That had yeah. a property room, that was a big yeah. room. Yeah. But then when we had our first event, it was like, okay, cool. Like Poker was like the third person to make the business work together because we all have like different characteristics. So it was like, cool, that now works like a big power team. And then, yeah, as Austin mentioned, our first event was in London. Um, then Nottingham, then we had an event like, every single month since. So it's been, it's, yeah, it's, gro- it's grown really quickly, you know, it's been really good still, so. And it's weird, we only mentioned before, Poker, do you want to speak about how you actually came in Gen Z Club? Because it weren't planned, you know, like. Yeah. It was not, Denzel. so it was meant to be well, you two. Yeah. How did it even happen? And then, yeah, yeah, you God, infiltrated yeah. Poker. Yeah, no, no yeah. so, well, from my angle of Gen Z Club, like um, Denzel was saying, we started doing networking events in Starbucks, unofficially, like, literally, we go to the top floor, if you know the one in Stratford City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, everyone would be like there, just networking. No one bought any drinks whatsoever. <laughs> 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 you guys just rented the drinks for free. Yeah, literally, unofficially. But, um, and that's where the idea came from. But then, obviously, then Clubhouse came and then COVID came, so we had to like pause on it. But then, the first event was actually a collaboration between the Gen Z Club and Poker oh, yeah. Banks. I remember oh, that. Yeah. But then, um, you know what's funny? Actually, where it really started is, I think Austin mentioned, we can't do oh, the Poker Banks X Gen Z Club yeah, event forever. Forever, yeah, oh, okay. So yeah, then, I, I just thought, you know what, you know, network events, that's where actually I got the idea to actually jump on TikTok. So that sits really deep in my heart. Mm-hmm. So it just made sense to join the Gen Z club. Yeah. 
continue with them and then mm. it's just a Gen Z club event yeah. and yeah. then wow. so he had a quick meeting like a permanent meeting because he said yeah I want to be a director I'm like okay cool <laughs> 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 a little meeting <laughs> five minutes I'm like yeah you got it <laughs> yeah no nah, yeah, so so that's, that's, that's how it all um, yeah. I remember like the Gen Z club and Pokey Banks event oh, that yeah. Was, yeah, I remember wow still. look at that and do you know we were trying to get you as a speaker yeah you were just speaker that first event remember oh yeah you were yeah I remember yeah you were the you were meant to be the speaker the first speaker you and Chris so many synergies in it already. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look, this is meant to happen. Yeah. This today is meant to happen. Yeah. But I want to ask you guys, let's move it on to finance. I want to ask you guys, what has been the hardest money lesson that you've had to learn in your life so far? Um, I would say for me is um, your money habits will stay the same whether you're earning 1K a month or 10K a month. Mm. So I think a lot of people think, okay, cool. As soon as I start earning 20K a month, I'll be able to say I'll be able to invest. But my uncle always used to say to me, if you can't manage £500, you can't manage £1,000 and vice versa. So I think that kind of taught me from young to start working in percentages. Instead of working, okay, cool, I want to save X amount per month. I'll say, okay, I want to serve a certain percentage of this income. So that way, as my income increases, I can still, you know, use the same amount of percentages and it will still mm-hmm. work effectively. Yeah, for me, it's this quote, um, invest and be clever or have to work forever. Ooh. So, send sorry, sorry, again, Jen, again, Jen, 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 Jen. <laughs> yeah, I read that one this today, earlier today, but um, invest and be clever or have to work forever. Mm. So, essentially, for me, I understood before I used to make money and I would go spend it and it'll be like a circle. I mean, I realized, wait a minute, in order for me to actually make money and keep it to last longer, I have to increase my income by investing in skills or whatnot, or invest for the long term into assets like stocks and crypto. Now, when I understood that, is that's what helped me understand how I can use money for my leverage rather than having to slave away for it just to mm. keep living the same life. Mm. So that's what I had to learn. It took a while, but I got there. And I think a big one as well, like I think this generation people struggle with as well, yeah, and it's entrepreneurship is that people think that your business make money, but it doesn't mean you're making money. A lot of people might go into business thinking, cool, look at these entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs living this lifestyle, but you can make 10K a month here, but that doesn't mean, you, that mean you've made 10K a month. Boy. That means your business has been 10K mm, a month, innit? Right. That's something that people need to understand when come to business now, yeah, that you can make a lot of money, but it might not directly come to you, innit? So I think me being an entrepreneur for the past four years now has le- helped me learn that it's not about your business makes money, you don't make the money, innit? It's about being smart, how you pay yourself, things like that as well. Yeah, that is a big one. I think that one hit me when I started my business because yeah. you know, people say, oh my gosh, you're doing so well. You're making so much money. I'm thinking, yeah. nope, honey, the business is making yeah. so much money. Yeah. Am I? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Wow. I love those ones. Mm. You guys are giving the gems. This is <laughs> why you're Gen Z Club. Gen, Gen, Gen. Wow. So I want to ask you guys, mm. on the topic of business, all three of you are in your early 20s mm. and you're all doing super well in terms of business, right? But how has it been being an entrepreneur from young? Obviously, myself, I can resonate with this. There is a lot of pressure that I, f- I feel like we put on ourselves. Um, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but for me, I feel like I've got to reach certain goals. And when you actually put it in perspective, people don't reach those goals mm. until they're like late 30s. But I'm thinking, you know what, I me, mean? I'm, I'm early 20s. I can do this. I need to work harder. I'm not working hard enough. But how has it been for you guys, your experience, like having a business and I think there's been a lot of pros and cons. I think the pros is a lot of experience. And I always say business is probably like the best self-development program you can go on. There's so much you learn about yourself, dealing with whether it's people, whether it's emotions, how you handle certain situations. I think for the connection side of things and obviously the financial rewards and the impact you're having, it's been very good. I'll say the downside is, we mentioned earlier, I think, one, a lot of people think you're probably more clear than you are Mm -hmm. just because your business is doing well. So whether it's family or friends, they'll be like, oh, let's say you lend some money. Oh, you don't need that. Don't worry mm-hmm. about that. Do that, that. So people kind of think that you're more killing you are. Um, I think as well, that like subconsciously comparing yourself to someone else. You, like for example, one thing I used to struggle was like, I could do something really well, but I wouldn't actually congratulate myself on it because I'm like, oh, but next man's done something even better kind of thing. So, and I think as well, when you're actually comparing yourself a business to someone who's doing something else, whether it's, and a lot of people obviously our age as well can be doing legal stuff as well. So for example, you could be making a lot of money from your business, but you know you have to be smart of it. But other people could be making money from other things mm. and spending it doing like a mazza, but 100%. you know that you can't really be doing that because you've got to be mm-hmm. your smart. And it's like kind of like sometimes maybe an imposter syndrome. So all those negative kind of emotions can also come with it. That's, that's probably my so take. I think it means like in, like kind of industries in it. So as a business now, if you're mm. building a brand, you're thinking long term, you're thinking, cool, I'll build this business now, I'll sell it for eight figures in about maybe 10, kind of 15 years in it. Whereas there's other industries, yeah, maybe like a trading, for example, or like a crypto or it was a short good industries, but it's more like fast cash, it's more like cool, just money centric, not brand centric kind mm, of thing. So, but then so means like you, when you compare yourself as a business owner, 
you're not kind of the same lane yet. Born a brand as you are, someone building maybe you know make money through crypto or trading, cash flow business, or, um, or, or you know um, what's the what's, um drop Drug shipping, shipping. Mm-hmm. Amazon FBA. Those are very very money profit businesses, isn't it? Whereas if you're building a brand, it's a whole different business, and you're kind of a different kind of mindset. Mm. Is what Denzel kind of touched mm. on. Yeah, now for me, I realized I was actually out of touch. So um, I used to look at people online doing well and think, yeah, that's me. I need to get to that next level. Mm. But then when you get, I think after COVID, I got slapped back into reality when I've noticed. You know, oh, you drive a nice car, you pull up the red lights, so you look to your right, you mm. see a family in a, in a like a in a dusty car, and you're thinking, mm. rah, like, why am I being mad at myself for not being somewhere when in reality there's other people way older in worse situations. Mm. So um, I think being young in my twenties, just you know, hustling, I used to be out of touch, but now I've got more grounded into reality, especially with the cost of living crisis now, yeah. and um, I've realised actually I'm actually doing well for what I'm doing because um, yeah. I feel like. I have to just stop and look at myself from the outside point of view. Like for me, I just see myself, like even my followers, I don't see it as that deep. But then someone else thinks, oh wow, 300,000, wow. That's a lot, man. But yeah. to me, it's just numbers and I'm not really deep in 300,000 people in, in a stadium type mm. of thing. So um, I had to just stop and think, wait a minute, I'm actually doing something big. And um, that's helped me like mm. stay humble. And I think with me, yeah, it's probably a lot of mental side of things, isn't it? So being a young entrepreneur, I started that like, was like 17, 18. And I started for fun. Like I just thought, I thought it'd be fun to have a passion, but didn't it? Then when I get to like 20 years old now, 19, like oh, I feel like a lot of people might struggle as well. Yeah, it's anxiety, isn't it? I feel like when mm. you're ambitious now, you got all these thoughts, you all these ideas in your brain, you got all this pressure kind of thing in it. I feel like when I first started out, yeah, because I was so young, I struggled to kind of manage those emotions in it. But I feel like right now I'm really, really good at that now. So like, for example, if you need to make money by a certain type of month, by the end of the month, kind of for example, a lot of people might stress about that, think cool, you know, a lot of depression, things like that. But with me, I'm very good at being present. I'm very good at living in the moment and thinking cool. Why would I worry about something that hasn't happened yet? Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that I want entrepreneurs to adopt here, yeah, learning that cool, like things might go wrong, but there's two things. One hasn't happened yet and two one thing I need to, I need to share to you there's always a solution always like mm-hmm. world, the world's abundant and one thing I've learned the fact that with my businesses I don't stress about what could go wrong because I know there's always an answer always a solution kind of thing in it and two I feel like you know you know living the present meditating will help me to a point now where like I'm not as attached to my business as I am as I used to be like if it goes wrong I know that's not me mm-hmm. Does that makes sense a lot of people feel like if my business flops i'm a flop you're not a flop that's mm-hmm. your business not you i feel like when you create the attachment of you and your businesses or you and your goals your ambitions it gets a bit easier i want to really add to what he said and because he mentioned about the um about not worrying about what can go wrong i think that's why another thing i would mention is well it's not necessarily your finance but business in general mm-hmm. about collaboration because i feel like when you're working with other people so your bad points it can be their positive points and it kind of mm-hmm. balances out so Funny us to mention that because I feel like even when it comes to Gen Z, for example, I think I'm naturally I'm optimistic in regards to like I I know I believe in myself I know that I can achieve good things but when it comes to business I'm always looking okay cool what could go wrong and how mm. can we mitigate that where Austin's kind of the other end of the spectrum so I feel like a lot of people cool they want to make fast money and they do that by themselves but I feel like when you want to make generational money or do things for the long term definitely don't know other people who share the same vision can actually help balance things out and take you um, like further along the way. Yeah, I totally agree. I mm. think I think it's really important to have people around you who you can collaborate with, like you mentioned, to mm. really take you to that next step. Because I mm. realized myself for a long time, I was doing everything myself mm. because you know, you, you know, like it's your baby. I feel yeah. like this is me. No one's gonna get mm. it and do it as well as it's me. And, but then yeah. I realized I can only go so far alone. You have to bring other people in like you guys have, which 100%. is amazing. 100%. So I want to ask you now, mm. there's gonna be people listening. Mm. Some of them have some cash and they're figuring out what should I do with this cash? So I'm gonna to say to each one of you, let's say I'm giving you guys a thousand pounds, right? You guys have got a nice thousand pounds. What are you doing with that money? Mm. Well, me, it's kind of a cliche answer, but I think before I used to always think, okay, cool, straight away, any money I make, I need to invest it in the stock market and crypto. But I kind of realized the first thing you need to invest in is yourself. And that's kind of a cliche mm-hmm. answer, but I think that is so true because there's no point in investing, let's say, for example, 500 pounds in the market and not understanding the market properly, not understanding where to invest, this and that. So I think, I'll, like my first thousand pounds, what I would get if I was starting from scratch, I will spend it in educating myself on whether it's a uh, high income skill, getting a certain cash flow strategy into a business, into the self-development, into books, and getting an understanding. And then when I've got that money and getting consistent income, um, what I invest in mainly my money is S and P five hundred, and that's just like an index fund. So it gives you a strong return each month. It's not risk. Again, I'm kind of a low risk person. Mm-hmm. Just like a low risk, but it guarantees you a good yield each month. So that for me is like the perfect investment for long yeah. term. Yeah. Yeah. So with a thousand pounds, I'll actually separate that a little bit. So with a hundred pounds, that'll go into education. And the reason that has to be first is because 
the reason you're asking this question is because you don't know what to do with your money. Mm. Now, you investing that money into <clears throat> education will mean you can know what to do with the rest of the 900 pounds. But the reason I don't, I wouldn't say you have to invest the 4,000 into education is because you should also invest time into learning YouTube mm. and True. Google are your best friends. You can learn a lot for free. So um, invest time into learning or researching side hustles or businesses to make some cash and then invest a hundred pounds in, into some paid courses or some paid eBooks. Um, the remaining 900, again, with that, it depends on what you learn and research, mm. but I will say the market, I wouldn't go there first. I personally believe the market is like the, the final thing you do once you've made your millions through your business or you made your hundreds of thousands through your, um, whatever you're doing for your job. I personally, I personally think the next layer is to go into a business where you can turn that 500 into a thousand rather mm. quickly, whereas Turning 500 into 1,000 in the stock market is a 100% return, which is ex exceptionally great. Mm. But for a beginner to do that is very unlikely. So you put that into like a clothing line where you can sell um, lots of um, clothes and make your return that way, I feel like it could be way faster. And it'd be more enjoyable experience because you learn a lot more <coughs> lessons along the way. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I, I think that, I think that's the thing that context matters, isn't it? I think life is nuanced and I feel like, as Poki mentioned, I want to use a whole 1K into education. I've put maybe a bit of it into education like Poki mentioned. And what I start doing is building habits. I think habits are so important. It's like Denzel touching it earlier. You can't invest 10 pounds, you can't invest a thousand pounds in it. I start, I use education to learn about money, how money works, how you know you can start live under your means, how you can invest into your money, what percentage you're comfortable with, um, things like that, kind of building the habits of investing of saving, of emergency funds, building those habits in it. <clears throat> then once you, once you understand those habits, I understand how that works now, then I'll start applying those habits and then using your research you want from education. I'll then put that into maybe a stock market, kind of just invest a little bit, just to get used to giving away your money. Because a lot of people are scared to give away their money, you know, they think that, they don't understand the investing isn't spending money, it's giving away money, mm, saving it for later kind of things, allow it to grow. So I'll say, <clears throat> main thing, I'll invest in education and then using that education, I'll invest the other 100 to build habits because it depends, like you could say start a clothing brand, for example, but if I'm being honest, not, a lot of people aren't built for that to start a clothing brand. A lot of them just lose their money. Like it's not as simple as you start a brand now, you get a name in the t-shirt, you sell it on TikTok, it's gonna sell, you, you might just lose your money. Yeah. Whereas if you work a job now, you want something sustainable, stable, like then it's mentioned SP 500, things like that. So context matters. So I say like, look at the um, options from the education, look at what's it's right with you, and then look into building the habits that are effective long-term that you can invest in you know, as your kind of income goes through percentage. Like one thing that, you know E-Man and Suko? Of course. One thing that he said I apply as well is investing um, half your income e each month. So like, it doesn't have to be all into one investment. It could be 20% could be stocks, 20% could be crypto, 10% could be savings kind of thing. So it wouldn't affect the habits in it. Mm. Obviously my book guy, I recommend two books for that. Go for it. One, The Latte Factor. Um, I recommend that. I recommend How To Be Rich, um, which I pulled out of course. And I feel like I got more, but I might come, come through later. That's good. Oh yeah, and Masters of the Millionaire Mind. So the secrets of the millionaire man, so. I was gonna quickly add to what he was saying, um, kind of on the topic of Gen Z's in general, I think one thing, because um, the hustle culture now is promoting, obviously, and I think businesses are very good, don't get twisted, but as Proki mentioned, unless your business is really booming, it's not gonna necessarily give you a good, sufficient cash flow every single month. So I think people, they're just looking past jobs. Mm -hmm. And I can't lie, jobs is actually good. Like if, if I was again to start from 16, the first thing I'll do is get a job because that's that stable income and you can use that money to now invest, to now invest in yourself, to now, build up another business. But I think people think, okay, 21, I need to not be working for anyone. I need to have no job, da da da, da. But like, there's actually nothing wrong with a job, I yeah. think. As long as you have like a maybe bigger vision. Some people might want to still work long, jobs long term and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think just understand your reason why first, mm -hmm. not just doing it because of the trend of, you know, oh, I don't want to work a job kind of thing. That's what I mean, context matters though. Like mm -hmm. investing can be so many things. It could mm -hmm. be getting a camera and you invest in the camera and using that to make cash flow by being skilled at camera. It could be videography, it could be a studio. So that's what I mean, context matters. Well, like who are you researching to different industries? Do you enjoy businesses? Maybe sorts might be for you. So like kind of do your own research here, yeah, learn about self-awareness, understand where you might fit in. I don't think investment is limited to Bitcoin or limited to Ethereum. It could be limited to, it could yeah. be anything. It could be a studio, it could be a mm -hmm. microphone. You could rent out your microphone. You could, you could be creative. You know, APM rents out his car. Yeah. He rents out his car, innit? Yeah, so and a lot of people do that. I know Rims does that as well. He mm -hmm. got like a nice car. They rent out for music videos. I would so, do the same, to be fair. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So like, kind of understand <coughs> self-awareness here yeah, and educate yourself and then go what sits out of you in it in terms of investing. Mm -hmm. See, I love the fact that each one of you said education. Mm -hmm. I think that is so yeah. key. I think a lot yeah. of people try and skip over that mm -hmm. and just say, I can make money quick. But I love the fact that you guys also did education. I want to kind of move it a little bit, right? Because you all touched on it a bit about investing. So mm. I want to know if one of you or all of you can kind of pitch in and explain 
A, what, you know, you mentioned um, S&P 500, cryptocurrency, basically just give us an explanation mm. on what investing is. And if you had to start again today or you're talking to someone who's never invested before, how would you suggest someone mm. get into investing? They've got money set aside, even just hundred pounds and they want to invest it. What would you say if they're starting from scratch? Mm. Well, me personally, I kind of split my investments into, I think the majority S&P 500, then I have, so let's, for example, let's say I have a hundred percent Let's say 60% would be in the S&P 400, maybe 20% into like just stocks that I'll be picking. But again, there'll probably be like safe stocks. Um, I might have like one, you know, risky stock and then like the other, the rest of the money in like crypto. So that's kind of like how I split my money. Regarding how you would learn about it, as Poku mentioned, YouTube, Google is your best friend. There's a lot of people. I feel like as well, you can talk to people. Mm -hmm. a lot of that, so we've got like friends like people like Nero and stuff yeah, who imagine. they're so, they, and I, feel, I always say this, you don't necessarily need to be an expert in crypto or stocks to invest. As long as you know about your field, you know that like, things at a foundational level, you can kind of talk to other people, do your own re research and okay, figure, figure out, okay, cool, this is what I want to invest in. Obviously, you're not necessarily going to always make a return back, but again, that's a learning curve and go forward. So yeah, I'll say um, YouTube, networking, that's how you can kind of learn about it. And then, yeah, um, apps to use. I use Trading212. That's what S&P 400. Um, I think people use Hargreaves, Landerdown as well. But yeah, I think just finding out what's best for you. Um, that's what I'll probably say. Yeah, so um, investing is um, transferring your wealth into an asset with the hopes or expectation to receive a profit back. Now, in terms of investing for me personally, um, I've actually you know, been watching and understanding a few things. Like, for example, from Alex Homozi, he mentioned something about instead of investing into the S&P 500, invest into S&P Me. So S&P Me is yourself, investing into yourself and using that money to grow yourself and do other things with the money because he argues that um, not a lot of people are believing in themselves. Them putting their money into S&P 500 is like them saying, cool, mm -hmm. this is as good as I am. I believe they can do better with the money. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. And I even I do too as well, because again, you want a certain bit of your cash to be growing alongside them, the market and um, grow to erode deflation, inflation essentially. But um, for me, I'm more risky. So it all depends on your um, risk appetite as well. Since I'm young, I don't have too much um, liabilities to pay. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have kids to um, pay for. I know I can risk a certain bit of my money. And if I do go broke, I know I can make it back. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I'm a little more riskier. So I may put a bit into crypto, even <laughs> even though we're in the bear market. I even put some into some business ideas as well. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, I bought like, I spent like a thousand pounds on just merch, just to mm. um, flip as well. So again, me me doing that, is me taking that risk, but it all depends on your risk appetite. Um, but again, the S&P 500 is a great, it's a great pick because again, that's the top 500 largest companies in the USA. So if you believe in Apple, um, if you believe in Disney, Amazon, all sorts, then it's a great, it, it makes sense essentially. Amazing, quickly, sorry Austin, before we cool. move on to you. You mentioned bear market. For anyone who's listening, Ooh. what does that mean? Okay, so um, a bull market is when, it's a bull, so imagine a bull going up, yeah. um, stocks are going up in value. A bear market is the bears, the bears is, it tumbling down in value, so going down in value. Amazing, thank you. Yeah, so I'll say with me personally, um, if you look at my kind of life, I'm very entrepreneurial. So a lot of the money that I do make goes back into my business kind of thing in it. However, I'm also big on inflation and you're, I'm big on beating inflation in it. And I'm big on like, you know, you can leave your money in a bank account, but like ain't really gonna grow. So the money that I do make, I do kind of invest in, this is kind of where I look at it. So I invest in things that, I understand like how the market's working it. So I understand if it's something stable, it's gonna go up and down like this, but like it'll go up, down, but in the long run, it's doing that kind of thing in it. And I've understood that through books in it. So I invest in things that I use every day in it. And I invest in things that I know have got longevity. Like one thing the guy says yeah, I love, yeah, it's like, unless the world melts, yeah, Facebook's gonna be on forever in it. So I invest in things like Facebook, um, Tesla, Nike, that's just being smart. Like in a day, I'm not, I'm a very busy guy, I've got a lot of businesses. So like when I do my money, I don't want to be too risky. I want to be busy, I do on an everyday basis in it. So things like Tesla, things like Nike, things like Apple, things I do on, a, on, a, on an everyday basis in it. So that's how I kind of manage I kind of my stock investments. With crypto, same way. Like that's the thing, it all comes down to doing what you do best, you know, to get invested in it, knowing your kind of self-awareness in it. I know that I haven't got time to be researching the, you mm. know, all the different cryptocurrency, all the coins, but I remember my friend's group chat, you know, you know Nero mentioned yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He's got a telegram group, telegram group where he educates people on what coins to invest in for long-term investments in it. So I'm a long-term investor and I invest in stable coins, which he's recommended, he's an expert. So I let the experts do their expert things. And I just kind of look at it, obviously do my own research a little bit, but like I let them kind of do their thing. And I focus more on like being an entrepreneur, being my business. Cause in the day, the best investment I can make is maybe build my business to a point where I can have eight figures, nine figures kind of thing in it. So that's kind of where my energy goes. But at the same time, I don't want to leave my money in the bank account where it's you know, not even beat inflation. So I put it in stocks that are 
a bit less risky. I want to add, um, I think as well, when you're starting out, you shouldn't look at, for example, the stock market as something that's going to make you rich when you're starting out. Mm. I think that's more so something that you preserve your wealth. So even, for example, with property, obviously, so my first like, kind of business wasn't in property. And a lot of people used to be like to me, okay, cool, I'm 18, I want to save up for a buy set. So a buy set is just like a house you're buying and getting monthly income. So, But I'll say to them, do not necessarily advise that because let's say you're putting now a £30,000 deposit, you might only be getting, let's say, £800 a month in rent. Half the bills and stuff might have about £300 profit left over, whereas that 30000 could be a lot more better invested into, for example, like a business or whatever, that will now produce you. So I, I'll say cash flow is king at the start. Do something that will get you good cash flow. Once you have that cash flow, then you can now invest it and then you can kind of duplicate it rather than just thinking, okay, cool, let me just stick my money into a property. Unless you do maybe flips or buy refurbished refinance where you can pull out equity of the property, I think, yeah, you should definitely focus on the cash flow business first and then go into investing. And mm. also, basically, I'm investing in right now, yeah, is my brand. Like, in a day, like, I've spent a lot of money on the editors, on social media, all that kind of stuff. But I know that my bank can pay. Like I've been paid decent money to speak at events recently. So I know that even poker gets paid a serious bag. And you, 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 <laughs> you, you both know really well. She's a boss. You know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like we, we all make money off off just us and being our brands. And so I feel like right now I'm big on investing into my brand in it and making it. Like I'm starting a new channel soon as well. So these are things ooh, right ooh. now I'm thinking about. Big up. So yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. I want to talk about Gen Z more, mm. right? So what would you guys say is the biggest thing that Gen Zers, so let's just say 18 to 24 year olds, are struggling with when it comes to their finance? I would say is not understanding the emotional triggers. And Ooh, that's a good I one. Talk on it, talk on it, Denzel. Cause you know, yeah, I think even me, like, and I think we were talking about this earlier, like there's always something that you have that triggers you to spend money. Mine could be maybe food, or it can be, for example, going out with my friends or whatever. And I think you gotta find out what is that initial thing that's gonna trigger you. So me, for example, I know it's my phone. If I'm on my phone too much, I'm on social media too much. If I'm on social media too much, I see too many people with different clothing, people with different cars, people going up to different things, and then that can create FOMO, which then can lead to me spending more money. So I think understanding, okay, cool, what are your trigger points and how you can mitigate that? Cause, so I was doing this like monk mode challenge. So when I'm trying to spend like maybe an hour a day on social media, I've noticed that I spent a lot less money. Mm-hmm. And that's wherever it's going out of whoever, it's just I spent a lot less money because I'm not on my phone less. I think understanding, okay, cool, these are my emotional triggers, let me put them to the side and just focus on what I can do. That's a good one. I think just just on that topic, I think a lot of people emotionally spend and they don't realise mm. that some people perhaps are bored and they go on their phone and they spend or some mm. people when they're sad they spend. And I think, mm. like you said, recognising at what points do you spend? Because I'm someone, I, we were talking about this earlier, I barely spend. Mm. Like I very rarely spend, so I don't have that problem. Mm. But if I did, perhaps I would change and alter some of the things that I do. Like, you know, some people say like, you know, if you're someone who struggles with overspending, mm. perhaps unsubscribe to emails. Them emails, they would wish, they, yeah. they wish I clicked on them because I literally open them like everyone's scrolling. Yeah. But again, my, my biggest thing is food. So that's why I'm making an active effort to cook more at home because mm-hmm. I am susceptible, like even Just Eat Deliveroo, yeah. they've been trying to get at me. The notification, they're trying to get me to spend yeah. 10% discount. Yeah, they're trying, they're trying hard because they know yeah. I'm not spending. But yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I want to quickly add to that as well because I think with social media, so this is one thing I talked about one of my friends. It was like, with Gen Z's, if we couldn't snap what we do, most of the stuff we do we wouldn't, wouldn't actually do. So, for example, yeah. a lot of people, and I can't lie, I'm not saying, because I do it as well, I'm not going <laughs> to lie, like, certain spots I'll go to can be, obviously, I want to enjoy it as well, but it can be also for social media. So, like, yeah, if you can actually document, okay, cool, I'm at this restaurant, because if you actually think about it, at 18, we're spending like 200 pounds at a restaurant. That's actually kind of mad if you think about that it. That is very, but you know, now it's normalized. I did not do that. I <laughs> was a I mean? Nando's queen. Mm. That was me, 10 but pounds. I, I, I'm I done. think it's just been normalized now in society. It has. And it's like, okay, cool. If you never snapped that you went hacker San or Novi or whatever, would you even go kind of thing? Yeah. So I think that's another thing and to consider. Really, I can't lie, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice, though. Like yeah. No, but not, not, not every place, but some yeah. of the yeah. great places like, are like, that not nice, great. Yeah. I'm not even joking. Fair enough. No, I think similar to what Denzel said, but. What I've noticed is that there's not enough independent thinkers in our mm. generation. Mm. So yeah, everything we see on social media kind of influences our next decision. And um, I feel like with social media, it kind of inflates our spending. So um, mm. uh, we've seen, it's like keeping up with the timeline. We've mm-hmm. seen these certain outfits. I'm like, yep, I need that. Or we're seeing certain opinions on Twitter and yep. people thinking this is real life. So um, I even saw something mad today. Um, a girl was saying, a girl was saying, um, death on Twitter, innit? A girl was saying, if he takes you to Premier in, oh, I saw that. It was, it was <laughs> a non hit, Premier in, Travel Lodge, Hello. or um, oh, I had this, oh. stay home. And yeah, that's now, now one boy at home's thinking, yep, yeah, cool, it has to be, um, it has to be, like, certain, it has to be yeah, Hilton, Hilton, like, certain level so yeah, that's, yeah. that, that one tweet alone is now like. 
change people's also, if you've got the yeah. game as well like if you've got a good enough, enough, enough game like girls will come to Ibis anyway like yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying like, if you go <laughs> like, 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 yeah, like, like, yeah, like, <laughs> no on a real like, I feel like it's what no, if you don't have a girl yet I feel like she wouldn't be around you in it and not necessarily where you take I'm not saying you don't cheat her because in the day you want to treat your girl but in the day like if you're leaving your money now I wouldn't recommend that because you want to find a girl that actually wants to be around you not just around your money in it yeah but I completely agree I think it is like you mentioned, like that perspective that people now have on social media. Because you know, for me, for the longest time, so I've got a new car now, right? Mm. I've got a bigger car, a Kia, unsurprising. Smart, smart, Kia. smart. Um, <laughs> but for about two years, so I got, my dad bought me a car when I was 21. Mm. Um, and then I changed my car, basically, it got crashed into last year, a few oh, minutes. Yeah. I don't want to go into it, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's it's okay, traumatic yeah. for me, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even in the car, but anyway, it got crashed into last year, so it got written off. And I didn't get a car until this year, right? So about a year I waited to get a car. But for the two and a half years I had it, however long I had it, I had a small little Kia Picanto. I don't know if you know what it looks like. It's a little tiny, yeah. small little car, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and because I'm not someone who takes in what people say online, if, if I take what people say online, I should have had a BMW. Yeah, I should have yeah, had a Mercedes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have had everything. Yeah. I didn't care. I needed the car to get from A to B. I loved it. My dad bought it for me. It's a nice little car. And I knew when I'm ready, I'll upgrade the car. Upgrade, and don't yeah. get twisted. I was earning more money. I could have upgraded it sooner. Mm. I just didn't feel the need to because who am I trying to impress? Like, that's that's how I felt about mm. it. And then when it got to a point this year, I was doing really well. And I felt like I want to treat myself. Like I said, I barely buy anything. So I said, I'm going to buy myself a car, mm. right? So I bought my car, right? But I'm happy with it. And eventually, maybe another couple of years, I will say, I'm going to get a different car, a nicer mm. car. Yeah. But yeah. I just feel like when you get so sucked in, I know people... So there was one guy um, I went to uni with and he had like a nice, I, don't, I can't remember the car, but I remember it was very nice. I remember mm. saying like, this is a nice car. And then um, one guy that I knew told me that, you know, like his car, obviously it's fine, it's fine. Mm. But he <clears> said, you know his car, if he misses one shift at work this month, <laughs> he can't afford <laughs> the payment. And I said, you're joking. Uh, he yeah. said, no, he literally Mr. works to pay for that car. Like if he misses one shift, he cannot afford uh, that car. Slave. So I said, he literally, all the money he earns is going to that car. That's what he's telling me. car as well, like a liability. Yeah. Like he, that's literally, and th- th- for me, it was because of the images, because it mm. looks nice, you can put it on Impressive socials, mm. and people can say, rah, you got a nice car, like I did. I said, the car's great. But I didn't realize, when I heard that, I said, boy, I'd rather walk. Yeah. Get me on that <laughs> train, it's not worth yeah. it. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. Mm. No, I was ever say like a short term thinking and not being realistic, innit? Mm. And one quote, yeah, I was trying to remember it because I forget things easy, innit? But I was thinking of my head constantly, yeah, is that so along the lines of every single pound you spend, yeah, you either make us somebody else more wealthy or yourself more wealthy, innit? And understand that. And a lot of people, as you mentioned, are making money and they're giving it all away. And one of the things that Poker really drilled in, especially in the early days of finance, was um, it's not how much you make, how much you keep, innit? Right. And the money, yeah, uh, like, which I brought that goes into this, it's not yours. <laughs> like, if you get the money, you spend all that, you're just giving it all away kind of thing, innit? So you need to actually pay yourself first, yeah, and keep the money for yourself, innit? And I think, kind of then what Menzo mentioned, is being realistic, innit? Like, understanding where you are at life, where Gen Z's, we're not 40, 50 kind of thing, innit? And it's okay to not be, you know, living a certain lifestyle now because it's realistic, innit? I think, what are the top 1% of earners in the UK? Was it like mm, 50, sure. 50, 60? Yeah, it's not a lot, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, but yet yeah, people want to be living a uh, six-figure lifestyle when they're top 1%, and even the, like 0.0% are not living like that. So I think it's about being realistic, yeah, and also being grateful as well. Like, I feel like comparison comes from lack of gratitude. Mm. The reason why you're comparing Jones. other people because you don't, aren't grateful for what you have now in it. So when you actually have ambition, but make sure gratitude of the fact that, cool, like, like there was one beautiful video sort of a day in it, about Steve Harvey, he said about how um, it's people that want to make a billion pounds in it, so they're making 20k. They'll go from 20k to 50k, and then they're still sad because um, they're not a million pound yet. But they're not grateful for the fact they went from 20k to 50k. Mm. They go from 50 to 150k now, yeah. They're still upset because not a million pound yet, but they've gone from 50 to 150k yet. So that they're not grateful for the blessings of getting from one stage to the next stage in it. So I feel like people need to learn yeah to be grateful and learn to enjoy the process or get from one stage to the next stage, yeah, and live in that process and then being grateful is what's going to allow you to get to the next stage in it. Because if that person was grateful for where he was at, <coughs> he wouldn't be blowing all his money into a new car. Mm-hmm. And then being grateful, not blowing your money in, maybe being wise of it, allows you to actually have the skills, build the skill sets, actually get the laughter you actually really want rather than being, you know, silly. If that makes yeah. sense. And I think there's, there's a, I'm not sure the actual stat was like, when you earn over a certain amount of money, it doesn't really make a difference to your life. No, it doesn't, yeah. I think that's why I always encourage people, like even like my little cousins is, to surround yourself with people with that long-term mindset because one thing I've noticed as well, as I've improved my network, it's always the people who, act, who actually don't have much money who act like they've got a lot of money in terms of spending the most, having the drippiest. The mm. people I know our age who, who are, when I say breaded, they've got money, you see them humble, yeah. humble, literally yeah. plain tees, everything humble, but I think because they don't have to prove a point, but the others, it might just come out of insecurity. Mm. Okay, cool, I need to now try and prove that I've got money. I need to try and prove to impress, but people who know they've got money, 
They're comfy. That's the thing with the spending it all. That's what I meant. Like, not paying yeah, themselves yeah, personally. Yeah. The reason why they got the money, the guys that are the flash people, because they literally, you literally watch them spend all their money. Like, mm-hmm. their jeans are four hours of worth of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you put in hours? You're it's eight, like, oh, yeah, you're when you get the hours, it's, it's mad though, because they spend all their money in it. Mm. So I think it comes down to, like, you know, the gratitude and. It comes from, from within. If it comes within yourself, yeah, it doesn't matter what you wear. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, like, you don't need to wear the nicer clothing, yeah, if you love yourself truly, really, and truly in it. So, mm. that doesn't mention, if you're not insecure now, you work on yourself, yeah, and build yourself up now, you don't need to buy that stuff in the press people. And if in the right kind of circles, talk to the right kind of people, the right kind of relationships, yeah, they wouldn't put pressure on you mm-hmm. to be a certain person as well. So, it all comes into it. Yeah. yeah. I think it just adds to the fact that I feel like. Well, a lot of people just want to spend a million pounds, not earn a million pounds. Mm. Yeah. That's that's just the big difference. I mean, when you understand that, deeper, it's just it's just mm. more of trying to show people, oh, yeah, I got this. But in reality, the people you're trying to show are worse off than you. And the people that you do want to impress don't really care about you. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's funny how the way the world works. Mm. So. Yeah, so interesting. Facts, yeah. So I want to pose a dilemma to you guys, right? Mm. So I get this quite a bit and I've had this conversation and I, w- I want to see if you guys have had it yourselves as well. But let's say someone's come to you mm. and they're like, you know what, I'm serious about my money. I'm serious about improving myself, you know, self-improvement, get my money up and this is me. However, I've got a lot of friends from school, you know, we're in our early 20s now, but I've got a lot of school friends who are still in the same circle as me, but they're just kind of happy working their jobs part-time or not earning super loads of money. Um, and they're, they're not really working to improve themselves. Mm. What should someone do in that space? Should they cut off their friends and find a new circle? What what does that look like? Should, should they educate their current friends? Like, yeah, what would you guys I say? Think, Have you experienced it? I think I've experienced that. I think my initial solution when I was um, when I was younger was to cut them off, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think. I have different friends with different needs. So I have certain friends, if I just want to get lit with, they're my friends. If certain friends, I don't have a business. But one thing I've always tried to do is, and my friends can vouch, is try to put them on. But I think you can only help people if they, so you can't help people if they can't help themselves mm-hmm. kind of thing. So you still help them and educate them. But one thing you've got to realize is time. So a lot of people that I would try to put on back when I was 16, I kind of thought that was normal to me, but it's not actually normal to think the way that we thought at that young age. But like now that like we're older, they're all, like all my friends are all doing their thing kind of thing. So I think it's, one, educating them, but giving them time. Because when you try to patronise them or whatever, that's not even going to help them. So I think, yeah, don't cut them off, but have different friends for different things. Mm-hmm. And I think there's that quote, like, if you're the smartest in the room, you're in the wrong room, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So, like, one thing, like, I always like to be in rooms where I know I can learn from. Because I don't like being it, like, I know it all kind of thing. I want to actually be able to learn and develop different, you know, insights from different people. So I think, yes, yeah, so just there's a company called um, the Gen Z, because they host quite good <laughs> networking <laughs> events. Uh, go to different yeah. events with... um people with like-minded and yeah. stuff like that you can go and learn from as well. I might, yeah. go, I might go to one. Yeah, no. no you really, you might attend. <laughs> I think still. I might attend as well. <laughs> Man, so. But um, yeah, I mean, pretty much the same as Denzel said. Like, even me, till today, I have different friends for different situations. Because um, I understand that since I'm still young as well, I'm not at a stage where I have a wife and kids and I'm doing my own thing. I'm still fresh out of uni. Mm-hmm. So I might have a few friends that aren't as switched on as me. But one thing I realise is that for someone that is so you know passionate about finance and elevating myself, well myself, I've noticed in life that I've actually, un- or coincidentally, kind of influenced people around me that weren't as motivated to mm. get in their job. So it kind of helps hand in hand. But for the dile- for the dilemma, I would say for that person, they need to put themselves out there to get a a, cir- a circle or someone that's in the industry that they want to work in to then have someone to talk to about. Because again this game can be really lonely. So it's mm. nice to have people that are doing the same things as you that go through similar struggles to help you get to where you want to be. Amazing. I'm going to be a bit more harsh. Go on. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, but obviously like, I, I don't I agree with cutting off. I agree that like, that's a bit crazy, innit? But I think distance is important, innit? I feel like if you're ambitious now, you need to be around ambitious people because I think when you're in circles like ours, yeah, you see the impact that being around certain people has on you. Like even with us, yeah, we see people making, like I'm not, I'm not saying numbers, yeah, but you've got a friend who shows his phone, yeah, this guy made, Certain man's top one percent man's yearly salary in more a than week. that, <laughs> more than that in a week. And, he, and wow. I saw it there, like they're not just yeah. there in front of me. And what does your being here in terms of not from like a jealous point of view, but in terms of like a ceiling, like whatever ceiling you had with your finances, what you could achieve here, it just smashed to pieces. Mm. When you see that, mm. I feel like you need to be around people that actually have that kind of impact on you. You know what I'm saying? Like. For example, yeah, that if you were around somebody that knew all about buses, like he knew everything about buses, like that's all he knew, and you're around him every single day, do not think by the end of the year you might know a bit about buses. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah. The same applies to like money and friends, innit? I feel like if you are ambitious, I'm not saying cut them off because then they like, they might still be good to you in some ways, yeah, but find those people. It's really, really important you find those people because you'll never reach your potential unless you're doing it. I'm yeah. saying, 
find distance with them, yeah. Sometimes one of my favorite quotes is the best thing you could do for someone is everything with nothing at all, and the worst we could do something is ev- is everything. Mm. You know, mm. and sometimes giving yourself that distance now, yeah, to actually show them, not just tell them, show them, you know, I've this myself now, I'm doing this, and it's working for me. They will see that more than you telling them, and now they sh- you're seeing them, you do your thing now, they might jump on board in it. Sometimes mm. you've got to distance yourself, show them the results, and get around people that are ambitious, are gonna be that see them that you have yourself of what you can achieve. Yeah, I think that is so important as well because I, f- I feel like, um, so I have my friend Amma, I don't know if you, um, she's been on the podcast, she's got a brand called Plant Made. It's like, that's not supplements, like hair, hair care. Okay. That's what it is, right? And she's got one for men. Um, so Amma and I became friends prior to her starting that brand. She was like a digital marketer, that's what she focused on. Um, and then she started her hair care brand. It was accidental, she literally was creating it for herself and then kind of went mm-hmm. from there. Anyway, she, hit a mill, so she, she hit a mill with under a year with oh, her wow. brand, oh. right? That's insane. Mm. And she did that during lockdown. Yeah, she, she created that business for her. She got let go from her job, you know, made a mill. And now I think her brand's been like 10 mil. It's only been under two years, Crazy. like 10 wow. mil now, right? And for me, prior to meeting her, mm. I had goals for myself. I wanted to do well, you know, I wanted to do okay. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if mm. I make like low five figures, I've done well. Mm. And then I met her and I realized that the ceiling I set for myself was way too, too low, low. Mm. way too low. Too because low. She, she was telling me like, what do you mean low five figures? What on earth? Mm. She was like, I've, I made a mill in under a year. Mm. Her brand's on 10 mil, not, not in a boastful way, but she's like, if mm. I can do it, Understand. You can do it. I yeah. think it's what, what you know. You all said it's around. It's about who you surround yourself with, mm. because now my goals have increased, and I do have friends from school who again love them to bits. You know, nothing's ever changed, mm. um, and I want them to do one. I put them on as much as I can. But then there's other friends that I have from school who just weren't. They mm. just weren't. I, I was wondering how you'd actually balance that because I think obviously everyone knows you as a finance person. Yeah. So Do your friends? We say they look at you in a certain way, whether it's for asking for money or seeing like, okay, cool. Okay, maybe she doesn't want to go out here, this and that. Yeah. Like, how do your friends kind of cheat you? Do you give like a free advice kind of thing? Or you like, you got <laughs> yeah, like, so, like, 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 <laughs> packages. Um, so I, I tend to find that the people who ask me for advice are people I'm not close with. Oh man! Mm. And I've had people just call me on the whim and say, "Hey, Kia, how are you?" And I'm like, "What do no. you want?" Like, yeah. imagine, like, what do you want? Yeah, yeah, and I'm waiting for them to get yeah. to yeah. what they're asking yeah, for. Yeah, and they're facts, like, facts. "Oh, so I've got this amount, or I'm looking to do this. What do you think I should do?" And I'm like, "Yeah." It's usually people I'm not close to. So quite often, I'll even give them a really short answer and say like you know, to shout me properly. Mm. Or I'll just be like, come and book me properly because I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. not going to use my number whenever you want. Mm. Um, for me, how have I found it? Um, I feel like me as a person, I haven't changed, right? Like obviously I've gotten bigger, you know, that comes with financial increase as well. But I have found that a lot more people do turn to me for money. So when they need to borrow money, mm. now all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I feel like people see me as like a bottomless pit, you know? Oh, I remember man. one time someone asked, oh, can I borrow some money, Kian? I said, how much? And they said, oh, just 2K. I said, ah, uh, just 2K. Just 2K. <laughs> Not saying that, like, I could do it, but that's the fact that you think it's just 2K to me mm. tells me how you view me. And they're long to pay it back as well. You don't need that. Oh my gosh. Because oh, I'm very much like, if you want if you want me to lend you money, you need something to date, <laughs> you've got to give it back. Yes, and yeah. I shouldn't have to chase you. Because the moment I chase you, we now have an issue. Yeah. It should be like, you said, okay, Kia, I'm going to borrow on the 26th. You'll have back in your account on the 30th. Mm-hmm. I should wake up in the morning that notification's in. I'm like, brilliant. Mm. And doesn't matter, I mean? doesn't matter if it's one pound or two pounds. I don't pound, care. It could be It's the same pounds. principle. I always say it's that's the same principle. What do you think what they say about don't lend to your friends and family because that's how you ruin relationships? <laughs> For me, I'd rather... So just give it to them. I'd yeah, rather give it to, rather give it to you saying, thinking, nah, I'm not going to get it back. Because I've realised that people... I've actually lost a few relationships due to like not being paid back. And what you need to think of it is like... So let's say someone's giving you... You've given someone 200 and they've not paid you back. They basically valued that relationship at 200 pounds. Mm. And those people, you need to not be around. So I'd rather give you money and not ha- have to like, chase you. Because I know one way or another, you're going to stop talking to me less because um, they know I'm going to bring up the money in the way. So yeah. I just analyze the situation. But if I know you have a good track record, you make your own money, you do your yeah, own yeah. thing, then it's different. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like about certain healthy boundaries, isn't it? Like if people feel comfortable to come to for money, that's the issue, isn't it? Like people, if you're the guy that people go to, like, cool, I need money, like I'll hit them up in it. If, if you're not comfortable with that, you've got to set those, set those boundaries, innit? Exactly. So I think with life, you need to set healthy boundaries with like the people around you, innit? And make sure that it's kind of clear, innit? Yeah. And also, like, as you guys know, just give them some money, it might not be beneficial to them. In the short term, it might benefit them, but they might spend it on gambling, they might do this with yeah. it, do that with it. So sometimes, as I mentioned, the worst thing to do someone is everything. Mm-hmm. And the best thing to do someone is, is nothing, innit? And yeah. allowing them to kind of 
find their own two feet. Maybe, exactly. like, another thing, people don't understand your education probably better than actually give you the money. Like, I could probably be better to educate you on how to make it yourself mm -hmm. and give it to you that you don't learn nothing. Yeah. It's all about, like, because at the end of the day, like, it's not about having money, it's about making money. You need to learn to make money. So yeah. make money and have money kind of thing, innit? Yeah, yeah. And if you just give you money and you lose it, you can't get it back. It's about, like, having the kind of lessons and learning how to make it. Yeah, mm. 100%. Mm -hmm. I, will f I will say, for me, I feel like I've become more generous now, though. Mm. In a sense of, mm. if I explain. Um, so for me, I like eating out, like I mentioned earlier, right? Mm. I try to cut down because if I had it my way, I'd eat out all the time. But I also like cooking, so I'm trying to cut down, right? But if I know I want to go somewhere, for example, I like, I want to go to a certain restaurant, and I know perhaps for some of my friends, it might be a bit of a reach. Some of them maybe could afford it, but it might be a bit of a reach. Mm. I'm probably more likely, without saying it, to cover at least half the bill. Yeah. So at least then you can figure out okay, the other cool. half for mm. your mm. bit, right? Mm. Or if I want to do something, I'll probably cover like, I was right up if your ticket just come yeah, just because I want my friends to still come. Mm -hmm. But then I guess that's down to me having curated, hopefully the circle that is yeah. my circle. Yeah. So I don't mind giving back to yeah. Cause I know when they can, they'll do the they'll same do to same me. Yeah, I'm just leeching off me. Yeah. I'm the same though. Like I have love experience in that. I value experiences. And if I want to do something mm -hmm. and like, I will just pay, like, if I really want to do it, I'll just pay. Cause I just want to do it kind do of it. thing. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, and also having the bonus mindset of fact that it's like you kind of, are scared to give away money, you might not make more money because exactly. that, that the mindset of the barrier thinking, oh, if I give away this kind of money, I won't get back. That's more probably worse. That's why people say, yeah, you're better off, you know, spending that bit of extra money for something you might like because it teaches your brain, you're that cool, you deserve this. Whereas if you keep holding your money kind of thing, you might never make more of it. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Amazing. I have a situation where um, I was at Fort Park with my cousins and um, I, I love, you know, roller coaster rides. And yeah, I want seeker. Yeah, 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 I love the know, thrill. Ad, ad, the ad, the ad. Experience. I watched it about 10 times. No, no, I was on the ride that five times, so that was like the fifth shot, and by then I already knew all the drops, so yeah, I, yeah, I, I had to pretend. Like, I like that one touched you still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to pretend. But anyways, yeah, so I love um, the thrill, and um, it was like four of us. We were at Fort Park, and um, but there was long lines, and you know, once you get a certain amount of money and you realise, wait a minute, I can pay to skip these lines with Fast Track, you know, having money access gives you access to like cheat codes in a sense. I realized, wait a minute, I can't just do this by myself. Let me just, you know, pay for everyone. So I got fast track for everyone. And then I had the fun of time because we we're all just running through the, mm. the, the queues. Yeah, the queues just, is non-existent when you go fast track. Yeah, just running through it, having fun, going all the rides. And um, and I, it wasn't like a thing where, oh, you pay me back. It was more like I wanted the joys from the family. Mm, course, exactly. So um, I couldn't just do it by myself and watch them in the queue and say, oh, wait, no, I couldn't do that. So I, I think that's, so as well, what I like to do as well is I like to ask people what, what they want the money for. And I'd rather kind of, if it's some percentage, I'd rather pay it for them rather than give them the money. Mm. Because if you give them that money, they can just now spend it and ask you for money again. But I think there's a quote that says, um, the worst thing to do to a man is to give him a status that he doesn't deserve. And that's basically, like, for example, let's say for example, let's say for example, your friend wants money just to buy shoes him now getting those shoes will make him think, okay, cool, I'm rich now, I can afford mm -hmm. these shoes. When he really, mm -hmm. he bought that out of debt kind of thing. So I think always making sure why you're giving that person that money. But as you said, if you want to do it for the experience, for example, if my mom asks me for anything, I'll do it, that's my mom, do you know what I mean? If, do you know what I mean? Certain things I'll do for experience, whether it's holidays or whatever, but also being smart because I think you can be damaging your friend if you constantly need that bank, like, okay, cool, I can just ask Denzel for that money kind of thing, so. Yeah, and giving this fun as well, man. Like, sometimes let's like support people in it. Yeah. Like, one guy, one of my followers, messaged me the other day, and he started a newsletter. I just subscribed to it. I probably never even click on it ever, yeah, but yeah. I still like paid my subscription because I feel like it's support yeah. and it makes you feel I good, doesn't it? Yeah. It, gives, it, gives, it gives a good feeling, doesn't it? So, oh, yeah. so that's another thing I was going to say as well. With your money, I say monthly income. So, obviously, I believe in tithes, like I do my tithes, mm -hmm. but even if you don't believe in tithes or whatever, I'll say always 10% of your money, yeah, try and give somewhere, well, yeah. whether it's yeah. charity. Okay. To that. someone that's homeless or whatever, just try and give ten percent of your money away. Because again, it's the yeah. abundance of mindset. Cool, you're giving ten percent away, but you're not going to come back and yeah. come yeah. back more as well. Shout so. out Monzo. You saw Monzo work with them. Yeah, I work. With yeah, them shout yeah. out Monzo. They do pots on Monzo. So yeah, you know, there you go. Get me, I've got my own charity pot there. So a little Monzo plug in it. Help them. Yeah, we up. love Monzo at the Gen Z club. I want to ask you guys since. I've got you guys here in terms of you guys are male. Mm. There are going to be people who listen, um, both men and women mm. who are listening, um, who are thinking about relationships. Perhaps they're in it. Perhaps mm. they're going to, you know, at some point they're going to get into relationships. What would you guys say when it comes to money relationships? Obviously you guys are men, so you can have a different perspective. Do you think that a man who perhaps has a girlfriend or is interested in a girl, should he have some sort of pot set aside? Should he think, right, my, I own X amount, 
but I've got to spend X amount on my girlfriend. Or like, yeah, what's your perspective? Obviously you guys are men, so um, you have a different take on this. market. <laughs> I think it's, if it's your girlfriend, girlfriend, obviously like, you got to spend on her kind of thing. But I think you just, you shouldn't be, you should spend what you can afford kind of thing. So I feel like, yeah, have, maybe it's okay, cool. A set, obviously something might go over if you're trying to do something spontaneous, but have like a rougher figure of like, cool, how much you want to spend each month. I think, don't make it seem weird. You know how certain guys, I think, they're just a bank for their girls, you know, every little thing, mm-hmm. da, da, da. I think you, and one thing with me, like I don't want to put her on rather than just her coming to me for money all the time, like see, okay, cool. Whether it's like, or like, for example, I'd rather invest in her business than just be giving her money all the time. So I think that's another thing you can consider, but it, it's difficult in this culture though, because I remember just talking to my little cousin, he's like 18, he's like the first date, 18, yeah, he's got a part-time job, he's gonna get an Uber for this girl from far, Uber back, pay for an expensive restaurant, this and that. I'm like, bro, like that's literally your month's wage gone kind yeah, of thing. Like wow. be be smart yeah, about it kind yeah. of thing. So I think, do what you can afford, but I know obviously when you get to a certain age as well, and if you're gonna date a certain caliber of woman, you're gonna have to have certain finances. Right. To, so if you can't afford that type of girl, don't go for that type of mm. girl. That's another Not reason. yet, then, what kind of thing? <laughs> as in, mm. in the works. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. Know what I'm saying? When you can't work mm. for it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, think, I think women as well can be the man's biggest downfall on mm. the progression, because yeah, the amount of money you can just spend in one night is crazy. So I think, yeah, just be smarter and know, know who you're dating kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Know who you're dating. And don't set, Standards at the start, if you can't maintain it. Mm. That's another thing I'll say as well. Yeah, I think one thing I'd say for all men listening to understand is that um, dating is an expensive hobby. Like as in, you know how you have um, your categories as um, your transport, your housing, girls is another category. <laughs> like, a big, a big, it's, it's, big another, it's, another, it's an expensive hobby. So I wouldn't go out of your way to do that just yet until you're financially secure, mm-hmm. once you've got a lot left over. And again, um, I'd say also, you know, I've made mistakes like this in the, in the past, you know, don't act like the man you're not, because mm-hmm. again, that'll come to bite you later on when they expect certain things. And um, and you just have to, you know, <laughs> smile through the pain. So <laughs> again, I wouldn't, I will just come, be be truthful, do a little bit of exaggeration, but mm-hmm. you know, you know, just come as you, because again, I feel like a girl will appreciate you a lot more. But also it's all about building as well. So um, for example, one, one girl I was chatting to, I was actually helping her start a business as well. Oh. So it's not just about, you know, spending and whatnot. I it's also- I yeah. yeah, 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 I'm also about, um, you know, building as well. So I was helping her start her business. I told her huh? to- yeah, like, I even get this kind of help when you're business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the logo, all of that, just little tips and tricks. But um, yeah, it's not just about, um, yeah. But just, just have a budget in mind then. Remember, like, if she really rates you, it's not all about, you know, the crazy uptown spending. It's more yeah. about the money, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, self awareness is key in it. And I think, you know, how you're raised, I feel like everyone's got different backgrounds. So obviously, uh, Nigerian household, um, I came, I've got a very good family, uh, my family, my two parents are together. And watching how that, their kind of dynamic kind of shaped mine a bit. So obviously, my dad's more of the provider. And that's kind of the role that I will kind of take in my relationship as well, if obviously, I'm my girlfriend's comfortable with it kind of thing. So I think it depends on your kind of upbringing, kind of where you stand. So I think self awareness is massive. But also I think with with that, yeah, also my dad's instilled in me is picking the right girl as well, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You've got to pick a girl that's actually understanding, that's mindful, things like that as well. So I think what my dad said, and me and my parents been together for a long time, and he said that, you know, he married somebody that actually was very understanding, in it, mm-hmm. and was, was a good wife, in it? So I think when it comes to making decisions, you know, when they pick the right investments, you also make the right decisions when it comes to girls as well, isn't it? And, you know, picking or choosing the right girl kind of thing and thinking about, you know, spending habits and her spending habits and her mindset and things like that as well. So I think obviously it comes down to, Number one, no matter what you do, yeah, make sure you're always below your means. That way you can invest more in your future kind of thing. So no matter whatever you do, make sure like your relationship is always below your means. That's the main thing, in it? And if your girl is maybe somewhat understanding and the right girl, she will kind of understand that as well kind of thing in terms of, um, and also like, you know, she'll want to be there for you anyway. It's not about the money, it's about you kind of thing. But however, money is very important in relationships. I 100. do think that the number one reason why relationships do fail is because mm. of money kind of thing. In a day, like you need to have money in relationship and it's just so given in it. So, as I've mentioned, live under your means. As long as you're under your means, then you should be good. Mm. I think you guys have put a lot of men listening at ease. They're like, yeah, guys, I've got my budget set. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to splash the cash. I get the right girl and I can, I can afford that. But the, I think the budget thing can be difficult though because I think you'd always go over your budget. Yeah, unexpected yeah. Because right. she can just ask for something so spontaneously. And obviously I think it's the ego side of men and yeah, the provider, yeah, cool. But then really truly know that, oh, damn, that's kind of hurts. So I think try and, Trying, I think, no, I think it's about self worth as well. Mm-hmm. Knowing okay, you don't need to impress her by money, kind of mm-hmm. thing. You're not her bank, do you know what I mean? Obviously, yeah, you want to provide for her, 
but also be smart at the same yeah. time. That's what comes to choose the right girls, wasn't it? Mm. But also, that's why my mindset now is more like, I feel a lot of people in society as well is very, you know, it's want to save, cut costs, yeah, but also make more money. I mm. think a lot, there's not a lot of conversation around make more money mm. as well, isn't it? That's yeah, when in our circle, like we're very big on terms of cool, like you might be out your budget, how how can I find another income? How can I, you know, invest the account, for example, maybe do photography kind of thing. Not saying just do that for a girlfriend, yeah, yeah, yeah. but just yeah. in general, like have that mindset of cool, I can cut costs here, but also can I find ways to make more money as well, innit? Yeah. Mm, yeah I find that so interesting. Maybe because I'm just an independent person. Mm. I'm like, I couldn't imagine asking a man for something that I want. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Would you not? Say, that's the thing. No. That's a, it's upbringing, you know, though. I'm saying like everyone's I different. I couldn't imagine everyone. doing that. But, but you still want your man to be to provide would you not? Yeah, but like pay for when we go out. But I, I wouldn't yeah. say, oh, like I really like these shoes. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't say, okay. Yeah, they're nice. Like, I hear that. I'll get them for myself. I'm like, it's not that deep. I'm just more sharing. I'm not saying for you to buy. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. And I, and I think you've got to respect that as well, though. I feel like if you are the father type, yeah, you've got to respect where your girl stands as well, on it. Like, yeah. I think it's more rude, yeah, to be like, if she's like that, she's independent, don't force it. Like, no, I'm going to buy you this kind yeah, of thing. Try like, to force her. That's how I say, I mean, you call me broke. I can afford the shoes that I said. So I think in the day, like, it's relationship, yeah, it's a, it's a team, innit? So yeah, you've it got to be understanding from both ends, yeah, and kind of work through in it. And, it you know, like, don't be so rigid. You know yeah, facts. Yeah. Okay, you touched on it briefly. Yeah. Ways to make more money. Quick fire. If you had to right now, we're gonna go the opposite way now. Austin's gonna start giving more time. Oh, no, nah, they just been carrying it the whole time, right? Yeah, true, true, Quick true. fire. If right now, not not anything that you're currently okay. doing, right? You yeah. had to make extra income for the next three months, right? What are you doing? I say I found a talent or something I'm skilled at. So for example, now I've been running business for four years now, and so I've got skills in marketing, skills in just business consultancy. So yeah. on the side, yeah, I've been doing consultancy calls for like fifty to hundred pound kind of per call kind of thing. So like things like that, where I'm using my knowledge now and seeing how I can apply that, or like a what you do at consultancy calls as well, mm-hmm. or like a one-off call to kind of increase income. So I'd say find a skill set, and it ain't got to be kind of business. It could be dance. Mm. You could you might have been dancing for the past ten years. You could be good at football, maybe football coach. You could be good at p- piano and find maybe like a, a talent or a skill or expertise you've got here yeah, and find ways you can monetize that through like consultancy or, you know, like a, a brand or something. Amazing, sorry. Consultancy. Yeah, cool. I've got a few. Um, number one, sell information. Um, a lot of people want specialized information nowadays from the right sources. So if you can package something and explain it to someone that wants to learn and they can then make a return on that investment where they're paid for your information, then that's the one way to make money. Number two, I want to say binary selling. You know, you can resell, for example, F1 tickets. You can resell concert tickets and whatnot. People, you know, in terms of demand, the demand's rising ever since COVID's come, or it's, it's kind of gone. So a lot more people want to get back onto the scene of concerts. So buying reselling tickets is another thing. And finally, the most simple things work. Um, when you think about it, like if you look in a room, like there's someone that's made a million pounds of selling tables, someone's made a million pounds of selling, you know, mics and whatnot. For example, the other day I paid these boys um, 50 pounds just to, to mow my garden. Wow. And I was, I was just realized, wait a minute, I just paid these guys 50 pounds. My, my road has around 300 doors in it. Let's say you knock on every door and, and 10 people say, yeah, my, my garden needs um, mowing. That's 500 pounds mm. made in a day. So sometimes I feel like a lot of people want to go for the shiny object. Mm. That's what we call the shiny, shiny object syndrome. Go for that, the crazy incomes. They want to make their next okay. Facebook. But in reality, the most normal things, being a plumber, you know, working the trade, it, it makes money. So again, you know, get a mowing lawn and get get busy. So yeah. it's a good book yeah. on that, you know. Yeah. Called Unsexy Business. You've got, Read look at that. He's really watching <laughs> the book club. He's saying that. I know. Make sure you join my book club as well. <laughs> Read um, Austin. Let's I'll go. say three things. The first thing is job. If I need the money right now and I lost all my incomes, I'll get a job because mm-hmm. that's kind of the easiest like way to make money. Though. Yeah, so I'm saying, for example, let's just get starting. Yeah, cool. Second thing is like a learn a high income skill. So right now you've got to realize videography, editing, copywriting, desk skills on demand. We've got a boy, uh, I won't say his name, but he gets paid ridiculous amounts to do videography across the world. Like he'll get nice. flown out, this and that. And also, yeah. I know like cameramen who do it for like flippers and stuff as well. Mm. And they get paid serious money. Yeah. So I think, look at the trends. Like what are people going towards? They're going towards social media. They need social media experts. You know, a lot of companies need social media experts. Copyright, all these things. So learn high income skill. The first thing is, if you don't know a high income skill, you can kind of be the middleman. So you know how like Uber, don't own any um, cars, cars. Yeah. they just have drivers. So for example, that you can have like an agency where you've got the customer who wants, a, who wants the service, you can, ha- you can find all the, whether it's the copywriters, the graphic designers, da, 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 and you can kind of put them together and take mm-hmm. your f- fees. So that's something mm-hmm. that as well, you have to be skilled in, you just gotta be like business savvy yeah. kind of thing. And that's a big one touch on, which I'm doing recently. So obviously I've been in fashion brand four years now, I've got a really good manufacturer. So I'm kind of, what I deep here is that I used to, when I first started here, I see manufacturers in the UK, and they used to outsource what I used to pay them to a, 
country in Asia mm. and they would kind of take a chop of it. I said, hang on a minute. First and foremost, I can cut my course by going straight there, which I've done mm. now. And second of all, I can do what they're doing. So what I start doing now yeah, is people come to me because I've got a brand now of fashion brand. Um, they pay me to kind of cl- make their clothing for them. I outsource the, to my fashion in Asia. I mean, you and I, you know, them, take um, a cut kind of thing. So mm. not even the cut yet, but I kind of, what's, what's that word you always use? Try like mark, mark up. up. That's it. I always mm. mark up my own price and, and keep that kind of thing. So nice. and it's very easy to make money. I don't, I'm not doing anything. I just say, make this <laughs> and send it to them kind of thing. So yeah. things like that, I like use your network, being yeah. a middleman. Nice. Nice. You guys, look at that. We love that. You've given just the gems. <laughs> now for anyone yeah. listening, there's so many different ideas that you can do mm. right there. Right, so before we wrap up, I want from each one of you, please, one piece of advice or one tip that you'd give to someone who's Gen Z looking to up their finances that you give them right now that they can yeah. implement or start to implement mm. to increase their finances. Yeah. I would say attack your goals and your financial situation with intensity but have the delayed gratification to allow it to happen mm. and to come to fruition so i think a lot of times we set these big goals which we won't achieve but you gotta understand that good things come with time and i think once you understand the compound effect so there's, there's, have you heard of that um saying it's like would you rather have a million pounds or one p doubled every day and long story short, i think for 30 days i think after 30 days that one p is actually yeah, worth more than yeah. a million pounds so actually understanding cool cool you gotta go hard with your goals but actually over time allow things to happen, you know. I don't like when people say there's no, you got time, because we do have time, but obviously you still want to act with intensity, but at the same time, you do have time to actually let them to happen. Do you know what I mean? Just be patient, don't, you know, get sucked in by lifestyle inflation or trying to impress this person, just focus on your own lane. As long as you're doing 1% better each day, then you should be fine. Yeah, um, in relation to finances, automation is key, automation is king. So automating your investments, so having the direct debit coming out of your account every month, that makes the pain of, or the anxiety around investing less stressful because again, it's coming out without you thinking, you've woken up and boom, it's, you've invested, or well, in fact, your, your app has invested for you. Same with um, even your credit card bills. Again, have a direct debit to your credit card company. So again, that's also paid for you straight. So you're not paying no APR whatsoever. And that's all done with the power of technology that we have with we have as a, you know, as a benefit to our days compared to those that have to do things manually. So, you know, take advantage of automation and direct debits. Nice. Um, I say generate cash flow. Uh, one quote that Emmanuel Azuko says, I've shut it out twice now, but I'm happy, yeah, is that, you know, there's three, six, five days in a year, why only get paid on 12, 12 of them, minute? Yeah, yeah. So if you do have a, have a job, yeah, find ways you can get another stream of income where you can actually have unlimited kind of scalability on it, kind of thing, innit? And what you want, yeah, you want cash flow, not cash. And I mean, a book right now on sexy business about how one guy built a business, made like upsets of six figures, but now he lost it all. And I made me deep here, like, you can make six figures, but lose it. And then you've made it, and you can say, oh, wow, I made six figures, but it doesn't matter if you have it anymore. So what you want, yeah, you want cash flow. So it's better to have maybe maybe less money, yeah, but it's repeated income than, you know, make a big, big goal once mm-hmm. and it's gone now and it's mm-hmm. gone forever. So I say, um, you know, find ways to get paid on more days of the year and also find ways to develop cash flow and um, that isn't limited by, you know, like, your boss, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys. This has been an incredible episode. You've all dropped so many gems. As you wrap up, tell everyone where they can follow you guys and follow Gen Z Club. Perfect. So my personal, um, denzeljones.com, I've got a new website out so you can follow me, see all my socials there for consulting and stuff like that. And also I've got my Instagram, well, all social media platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, underscore Denzel Jones. And my property page is DJ Property underscore solutions on Instagram as well. Yeah, um, check me out. I'm at Pokebanks and everything. Um, Instagram, Snapchat, all sorts. And um, yeah, no, literally, if you want to learn and scroll in your feed to get some great financial content and indulge yourself, not indulge Doja, indulge yourself. <laughs> 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 you were waiting to say that one. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's not the focus. Literally just then, but um, yeah, no. <laughs> indulge yourself with some great financial content. Yeah, no, make, make sure you check it out. You know, it's not about, social media isn't bad, it's about what you follow, so. Okay. Yeah, make sure you're following Pokebanks. Um, I'm Austin Nicola on all platforms. Um, there's two O's because one was taken. So Austin Nicola, <laughs> A-U-S-T-I-N-O-K-O-L-O-O on um, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat and Austin Nicola on LinkedIn as well. So connect with me. And my book page is oh. Reading of Austin. Um, I'm a passion band is Born in South London and the Gen Z Club is... Yeah, I was going to uh, say, is the Gen, Gen Z Club... Yeah, I'm thinking no one so said yeah. it. So well, the Gen Z Club... Yeah, so the Gen Z Club, for those who don't know, we kind of mentioned, is basically a platform for Gen Zs to grow and to become the best versions of themselves. So we host monthly networking events, we host workshops, different industries as well. So yeah, feel free to check us out, thegenzclub.com on Instagram. Our Instagram is the.genzclub. We're on TikTok, the Gen Z Club. LinkedIn, the Gen Z Club. Also companies looking to help target Gen Zs, the Gen Z Club. So yeah.
Cool. We're your one-stop hub for Gen Zs, basically. Yes, you? Yeah. you are. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you to everyone listening or watching. We'll be back again very soon with another episode. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Let's go. Spooky Banks, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah. And that work is? Yeah.